Welcome to Vintage Hollywood Archive. Mickey Rooney inspired laughs from the audience while he dished out tears to the women in his life. Still, Rooney didn't care. All that mattered was whose knockers he would see before the day ended. With tenacity and self-confidence which belied his stature, there was no woman Rooney couldn't win over. Sadly, his charm wouldn't be a source of lifelong joy, but a trigger for nightmarish relationships. How did Mickey Rooney have the confidence of 100 men? Make sure to watch the video until the end. And if you are new here, don't forget to join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Vintage Hollywood Archives channel. Mickey Rooney, the original Hollywood train wreck. Bad person, worst lover, and the worst father? Rooney wasn't called the original Hollywood train wreck for nothing. The man had a taste for women and a dedication to running his own life. Enthralling the hearts of many with his boundless energy and enormous talent, Rooney had a penchant for squandering money away as quickly as he made it. This is particularly interesting when you consider that he was a box office king for about two years and made millions over the length of his career. However, marrying many women and having to pay settlements can decimate even the steadiest of finances, and he had a thing for gambling with unsavory bookies. Rooney ran through life chasing instant satisfaction, and he got much of it. However, he was focused on himself and could care less about whatever his children did for themselves. He was the opposite of the persona that dominated the cinemas in the 30s. Describing the talented short man, Richard Lertzman, the co-author of The Life and Times of Mickey Rooney, wrote, He was a philanderer, alcoholic, and gambler a maniac depressive and a narcissist, an absentee father and an uncaring husband. Supremely talented on screen, off screen, he was a reprobate. How else do you want to describe a man who took his 13-year-old to a call girl for his 13th year birthday? Also, when his son Timmy died after battling a long sickness, Rooney complained, why would that kid wreck my birthday? Well, he would have his just desserts as the people surrounding him in the later years also treated him with similar, if not worse, disdain. I felt trapped, scared, used and frustrated, he claimed as he suffered from verbal assaults and manhandling while dealing with bankruptcy. His problems with money got so bad that colleagues arranged his burial and he had over $13,000 in cash with numerous debts. The legendary train wreck would say for all who cares to hear, I don't regret anything I've ever done, he would say. I only wish I could have done more. Rooney was merely trying to show some form of order in his recklessness. Before he died, he was more honest with himself. He said, I screwed up my life. I pissed away millions. While his life wasn't inspiring, his career fared better at least before he enlisted for the war. Rooney would receive Oscar nominations twice for the films Babes in Arms and Human Comedy, which hit the theaters in 1943, but he lost those two nominations. Luckily, he would win the honorary Oscar twice. Mickey would also win an Emmy for his role as a handicap in Bill and two Golden Globes for other movies. While the star may not have racked up more awards, he did what most child actors at the time couldn't do. He had a relatively thriving career. At 5 feet 2 inches, Mickey Rooney towered over women's hearts and trampled them with so much childlike glee. The legendary man flirted with destruction a lot, and it seemed he got an adrenaline rush from courting the devil. The diminutive maestro wasn't much of a looker by Hollywood standards. In his memoir, which was published in 1991, Mickey admitted to this. He said, I was a gnomish prodigy, half human, half goblin, man-child, child-man. This wasn't hyperbolic self-criticism. It was true. He looked more like a child than a man, a physical trait that helped him make the big bucks, but also trapped him. He complained about his predicament. I was a 14-year-old boy for 30 years. When I was 19, I was the number one star. When I was 40, nobody wanted me. 
Still, his impish stature didn't diminish his self-confidence, which perhaps flowed from his overbearing talent and money. Coupled with these two, he had a tongue that could suffuse a woman's cheeks with blood and energy that powered his relentlessness. Mickey, don't take no for an answer. No matter how willed a woman was, when he had her in his crosshairs, he never missed the target. Mickey went through the ladies like a hot knife through fudge. His off-screen debauchery would cause him dearly in his personal life, but what happened to Mickey when he got to orgasm? The small-statured maestro would ask, what is an orgasm after all, but the laughter of the loins? His phallus did a lot of laughing, but he didn't. For each mind-blowing orgasm he had, more of his life ebbed away. But what did it matter to Mickey? He was addicted to instant gratification and had a self-destructive streak a mile wide, as Brines, the co-author of The Life and Times of Mickey Rooney, published by Simon & Schuster, noted. It was this love of instant gratification that would be the fundamental cause of all of his marriage breaking. The multi-talented man would marry a total of eight times, and as one of his wives, Elaine DeVry, noted, living with Mickey is no bed of roses. Six wives can't all be wrong. His marital journey of repeated misfortunes began with Ava Gardner, who he had the initial delight of meeting when he was on the set of Babes on Broadway. Ava saw the pint-sized little man perform Mama Yoquiro, wearing drag as he dressed like Carmen Miranda, the Brazilian star. According to Lee Server, the author of Ava Gardner, Love is Nothing, the ever-energetic Mickey Rooney was wearing at this time a spangled bra, a skirt, a fruited turban, had rouged cheeks, and his lips bore a thick coat of red lipstick. A famously short young man, he stood now on high platform heels favored by Miss Miranda. The two stars would be in awe of each other, but while Ava Gardner was still the moon-eyed virgin, Rooney, who was just two years older than her, was already a wolf junior grade. Mickey approached her and he confessed, everything in me stopped, my heart, my breathing, my thinking. Well, considering how exotic Gardner looked, his reaction was completely normal. Mickey, not the mouse, had found his first minis and he sat down to work and he was driven and tenacious. Soon, he would wear out Ava's defenses in 1942, and from that, she became the leader of Mickey Rooney's former wives' marching band. Their marriage was tumultuous, and it lasted only 16 months. Andy Hardon, as Ava and Turner would describe him, had another woman on his and Ava's marital bed. Ava was in the hospital to get her appendix removed after it had become inflamed. Mickey couldn't wait for her to return before he found another hot broad to fill up, and he did. Ava, who was in her late teens, was livid as they had just finished their honeymoon a month prior. Andy Hardon appeared remorseful and would splash the cash for his hot wife. He got her a great gift to compensate for his failings, and it was a large diamond he would later collect from Ava as he had entered into one of his debt sprees to bookies with Mafia links. Rooney's debt sprees were so terrible that the Mafia would have offended him were he an ordinary guy. But being one of the leading top earners in Hollywood, as revealed by Wally Cassell, they decided it would be bad for business for them to put him in a cement block. Ava also put up with this slight from him collecting the diamond ring. The small-statured sex midget would not appreciate that and leave off the philandering. He took his trade to another teenager, and Ava decided it was enough. She began divorce proceedings against him, but MGM was fiercely protective with their money-making machine and silenced Ava from revealing some dark secrets. You'll be finished at this studio, they told her, and they also gave her the opportunity to fast-track her career growth if she kept mum. Ava chose to keep quiet, and so the great philanderer was safe to plunder some more. What's worse? He knew he would be protected for any of his acts as long as he had a contract with MGM. However, the might of his studio couldn't protect him from Betty Jane Reyes, his second wife, who divorced him in 1949 after five years of marriage. She was ready to report Mickey performing questionable acts with a teen. The teen, who was a star herself, was found kneeling before Mickey's Mickey and bobbing back and forth on it. 
It took all of Mickey's wealth at the time to get Jane to keep quiet. Mickey moved on to wife number three, the same old story. He married Martha Vickers, who bore him a son and left him when his drinking appalled her. In 1952, Rooney married his fourth wife, Elaine DeVry, who also had her problems with the Mafia. Still, DeVry helped Rooney improve his finances, but he squandered it not long after, and in 1958 they parted ways, with DeVry collecting a decent sum in the settlement. Further Killing Mickey's Finances Despite his history with the women and his ailing finances, women still flocked around Mickey as he retained his infectious energy. His fifth wife was Barbara Ann Thomason, his mistress when he was with DeVry, and who had longed for Mickey to divorce DeVry and marry her. At some point, she even attempted suicide when it seemed she wouldn't have her way. She did have her way in 1958 as they tied the knot, and it was Mickey's turn to try and off himself, as it seemed the flippant nature of his marriages had taken a toll on him. He was depressed. Thankfully, he didn't kill himself but he aggressively pursued other women. Barbara Ann Thomason wore Kara Mitchell revenged and started a relationship with a Yugoslavian actor. When it seemed Thomason and Rooney would reconcile, the actor killed her and himself. However, the tragedy didn't deter Rooney as he married his sixth wife, Marge Lane, Thomason's friend, and that marriage didn't last long either. 100 days was all it took. Everything came crashing down, but no surprise there. Then it was Carolyn Hockett who joined the list of wives in 1969, and in 1975, she left as she cited that Rooney had poor finances. But three years later, he would get into another one, his last marriage. Jan Chamberlain, the singer, would become the last woman in the Rooney marching band. It could be said that the last marriage was the most testing one for Rooney. His wife had him arrested for issues within the home, but without evidence, Rooney could not be prosecuted. This would happen so much within the marriage that it became a theme. As if Chamberlain making Rooney an object of scrutiny of the law isn't enough, Chamberlain's son, Christopher, from another marriage, and his wife were stealing from Rooney. As if the stealing wasn't enough, Christopher and his wife, Christina, would be physical towards Mickey. The legendary Mickey would be insulted and pushed around. Two million dollars or thereabout was how much the infamous couple stole from him. Despite the many warnings he got, some of which are iconic, like the one from MGM's top dog, Louis B. Mayer. When Rooney was getting out of hand, Mayer called him and said, Listen to me. I don't care what you do in private. Just don't do it in public. In public, behave. Your fans expect it. You're Andy Hardy. You are the United States. You're the stars and stripes. Behave yourself. You're a symbol. The only symbol Rooney showed was a symbol of debauchery. Apart from his different marriages, Mickey had multiple affairs. Seriously, this man has the confidence of 100 men. He had the confidence to bag a lady twice his age when he was 18 on the set of Marie Antoinette in 1938. Cher needed the break from being recently widowed and deprived of sex. The relationship was steamy, and it had the scandals tabloids love so much. Another of his affairs would be his many visits to the brothel that has surgically changed the face of its women to look like celebrities. It was amazing, Rooney said. Every girl looked like a film star, Clara Bow, Jean Harlow, Greta Garbo, Norma Shearer. They were dead ringers. Lana Turner was another one of the actresses, and he was proud of her being one of his many affairs. Rooney said, You may wonder what she saw in me. I don't know. I do know that on the dance floor, I could make her breathless. Lana Turner would be one of the many big-name actresses he would have a relationship with. There was also Marilyn Monroe and Joan Crawford. However, one woman got away from Mickey, or should we say the woman he couldn't bring himself to taint? Judy Garland was the woman many people thought Rooney was dating, but actually would. Did Rooney fear tainting Judy, or Judy turned him down? These are the questions many people have been asking. Judy Garland was one actress Rooney shared the screen with a lot, 
so they would be seen together frequently, which further fueled the rumors of a relationship. Rooney tried to kill the rumors as fast as they spread, but he would find that near impossible. At some point, he said, Judy and I were so close we could have come from the same womb. We weren't like brother or sister, but there was no love affair there. There was more than a love affair. This was not to say that the two hadn't thought about a relationship. Some reports claimed Judy wanted one, and Mickey himself would verify that Judy did romantically love him. He said, If I had not been tainted with the same phony Hollywood notions about who was beautiful and who was not, I would have fallen in love with her myself. He also had a little fantasy about him and Garland marrying, growing old, and staying off pills. It was a great fantasy as he would struggle through his life with alcohol and drugs. It wasn't only his off-screen life that had all the excitement. His on-screen life was also full of excitement. Born as Joe Yule Jr. on September 23, 1920, in Brooklyn, New York, to parents who were vaudevillians, Rooney's choice of a career was set in stone. At two weeks old, he was already going on tours with his parents to their acts, and he did join them when he was over a year old. There was no entertaining act he didn't learn in his early years. When he was three, after his parents divorced, he and his mom made their way to Hollywood, but it wasn't until he was five that he began to land roles, even if they were small. His first role was in Not To Be Trusted, and by five, he got to play Mickey McGuire, which would later inspire his name. He grew his fame as a comedic genius and appeared in about 50 of the McGuire films from 1926 to 1933. The hype around Mickey McGuire died down, but by then, Rooney had gotten a contract with MGM, where he appeared in bits and part roles such as in Midsummer Night's Dream in 1935. He became Andy Hardy in 1937 in the A Family Affair film series, which went on for nine years. He appeared in many iconic films and became the box office king. However, his stock dipped when he was enlisted for the war, and when he returned, the world had moved on and his $100,000 had been slashed to $25,000 by MGM. Eventually, MGM let him go, and he continued to struggle for roles, but never reached his earlier heights. However, he kept trying and found roles in Pulp, Black Stallion, and Broadway show Sugar Babies, which went on for three years. His lack of roles made him play a Japanese man in Breakfast at Tiffany's, even the maestro himself would confirm his lack of roles when he said, from 1959 to 1979, I did very few movies I could be proud of. Most of them were crap. Still, the man made a great mark in Hollywood movie history and would have the movie credit for over 330 films with a career spanning decades. Although not everyone will remember him fondly, especially his kids, who he was reportedly a bad father, but Hollywood's history wouldn't be complete without Mickey. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new here. Mickey Rooney has built an image around himself that he has never been able to reshape. Others have made the same mistake. Why Ernest Borgnine still disturbs our dreams. Watch this video.